I appreciate everyone joining today. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're calling in from. Um, but my name is Brian. I'm the graduate program director in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences at, at Hofstra University. I'm I in charge, de facto, run, whatever, however you want to call it, um, the Engineering Management Graduate Program, which is actually about a year old now. And uh, we're actually hosting this webinar today uh, with the graduate pro the graduate admissions office, which I have Fred on the line with me as well as Liliana. So welcome, I appreciate you guys uh, joining us. And this is going to give you a little taste of some of the topics that you know that we talk about in engineering management that we will be learning in different cl courses offered in the EM pro the engineering management EM program at Hofstra, and really just an educational aspect for anyone that is interested in seeing how this topic kind of impacts the modern engineer. So a little bit of background about myself. Um, I've been with Hofstra now for almost going on a full year almost. Um, I actually came from another university previous um, where I was running their graduate program and teaching in engineering management. I have my undergraduate in industrial engineering and my master's and doctorate in engineering management. And I teach primarily in the area of project management, analytics, and quality and process improvement. So in addition to directing the graduate program. I teach many of the courses in the graduate program and I also teach courses in the undergraduate industrial engineering program in the School of Engineering at Hofstra. And um, let's see. And analytics is one of the areas that is really of interest to me. And so when I thought about, you know, when we were talking about doing this type of webinar for, you know, professional development and such, it came right to my idea about why don't we talk about business intelligence, data analytics, and how it actually impacts the you know the current modern engineer so the whole theme of today or this session is talking about how in business intelligence and data analytics uh impact engineering management and really just specifically the field of engineering so um again we'll have we'll do this uh portion for about 20 25 minutes and then from there we're going to open up the q a about the graduate program um you know this topic here any topic that you may have about engineering management itself and um, I will, if you have any graduate, you know, admissions related questions, Fred and Liliano can also support us as well, if I may not know the answer, I'm still learning a little bit. So let's talk about the idea of data analytics and business intelligence. Really, if, when, you, when it comes to it, the idea of data analytics, in my opinion, and you know, we'll see with the different types of technology and engineering analytics that go on this these days, it's really key for the modern engineer. It's a at the end of the day, it's a game changer in terms of how we overcome challenges and how we see new opportunities. So in the current environment, you know, let's just take manufacturing. Manufacturing owners, you know, we use technology to reduce cost, improve efficiency, uh, meet regulatory legal compliance, to increase overall equipment effectiveness. So we, engineers and organizations are, in a way, forced to adopt analytics because um, it helps us to, to accomplish these different technological goals, whether it's manufacturing or not, you know, in a transactional environment. But adoption of advanced analytics is not just installing software and letting the software do everything for you. It, it complicates, it has its challenge, challenges. It complicates the landscape of, you know, all the different tools we have to use. Many of our end users, e even in some engineers, may not understand data analytics, depending on, you know, their experience level, their education level, the role that they play in the organization, they may not understand what certain analytics or even techno technology, you know, that comes with analytics like SAS or Minitab, how those could be not only daunting, but they may not actually have a, a background in it. Many engineers are, in a way, limited or stuck using spreadsheets and basic trend analysis, you know, in their daily uh, engineering tasks. In modern engineering, we need to go beyond using spreadsheets and just basic and, uh, analytic tools. So we are, we, you know, for example, we're in an industrial internet of things. We are ma making more and more data um, every day. In the last three years alone, we've produced 90% of the world's data in the last three years worldwide. Think about that. We have things like smart factories, okay, that improve connectivity okay, lead to advanced manufacturing. We're in this digital revolution at this point, which we've been, you know, now for, you know, almost two decades, you know, almost two decades. We're creating smart factories. 
Okay, but now we can take these smart factories and get down to the smallest detail. So this digital revolution is connecting everything. Here's an interesting fact. Back in early 2000s, there's roughly 5 billion people on Earth, you know, give or take a couple of million. And there's about 2 billion, 2 billion device, smart devices out there. So that's almost like, you know, you know 20%, you know, 0.2 ratio of device per person. Now we're roughly 7 billion people, okay? And we have about 50, 55 to 60 billion devices out there. That ratio of device per person has gone up to around almost seven to eight devices per person. Whether it's sensors, machines, in a plant, we're generating trillions of data points every, every year. So connectivity, we have websites, wearables, augmented reality. We're in the era, era now with having great technology, big data analytics, okay, where we look at velocity, veracity, volume, variety gives us the ability to predict. We have things like cybersecurity, a big concern, as well as machine learning. How do we teach things like artificial intelligence? And then with advanced, that leads us to the idea of advanced manufacturing. The idea of additive manufacturing, advanced materials, and autonomous things like robotics. So it enables us with having new ways of doing business, but it also leads into needing real-time process management and real-time ways of improving efficiency. That's where analytics comes in. So it's evolved so rapidly that we need to, engineers can't use the same system and experience uh, in this digital transformation. We need direct access to that data so we can make real time changes. So think about the world of intelligence machines, okay? We have safety, ex customer experience, you know, real time decision making, predict predicting the future, cost effective operations, all of those are tied together by using things like intelligence machines, intelligent machines. Or the idea of how analytics has changed from the Industrial Revolution till now. In the 1750s to 1900s, you know, that industrial, what we've known as the Industrial Revolution, is when we powered up factories. We made manufacturing was really kind of king. In wave two, the Internet Revolution, the dot-com, really ended around 2000, computers became more and more prevalent. Okay, now we're in this industrial or digital revolution where we do analytics, not necessarily by hand or using just spreadsheets, but using a lot of physics-based, machine-based expertise and predictive analytics to help us make real-time decisions at really, really, really fast. Connected cars with engineering, cognitive companion, like, you know, you can have CarPlay, you can have telecommunications, mobility in this smart car. If you think about it, you know, even though it's called a car, even though it's called a car, in reality, it's just a smart car. It's a smart car, not really a, a car. It's a, it's a computer with wheels, okay? So we, these connected cars enable us with emergency support, driver assist, insurance. I know I have a tool in my, in my car that I, can, I plug in and my insurance company can get data and determine whether or not my premiums can go up or down based on my driving habits. So whether it, we have multiple inputs, it allows us, even in many cases, companies are vying now for the autonomous vehicle, self-driving cars, aircraft. Digital aircraft is, you know, and it'll be great when we can start flying again and traveling again, personal, professional, whatever it may be. It has helped us to improve efficiencies and performance, fuel consumption, scheduling of crew and, and aircraft, fleet synchronization, maintenance. That's real-time decision-making right there that we might not, we would not have if we didn't have the technology there. But again, these digital enterprises create challenges for engineers. Same with places like our digital life. Many of us are always on these things, our smartphones. You know, whether you're, you know, my kids upstairs watching a show and based on their viewing habits, you know, Netflix or Disney Plus will give them recommendations in terms of what they should also watch based on their viewing habits. It provides seamless connectivity. It's almost like, you know, I remember when I was a kid, it was, it was very hard to get a cell phone signal in certain parts of Long Island, Long Island or New York. But now you can pretty much have energy management, surveillance, to entertainment, security, all in one shop. We used to have it need a device for one of each of those. Now it's led us into having a lot more flexibility into what we're seeking to do. Even remote service platforms, and this is where things like cybersecurity comes in. You know, we have industry, whether it's nuclear industry, power industry, public utility, telecommunications, 
we can remote control, remote access these various platforms from across the world, across, you know, across the United States. And while it's great because it allows us to monitor th things like fuel systems, advanced sensing and imaging technologies, it also gives the, in, the new challenge or the increased challenge of cybersecurity because if we can access it remotely, other countries or malicious, you know, like intent, like hackers can access it and potentially cause damage to the infrastructure of the United States or other or other countries. So that that's introduces another challenge for engineers. Even energy, if we move, you know, let's say we move away from fossil fuels, even if we go more towards renewable energy, or even if we stay with the balance of the two, the demand and delivery is super critical. People want their energy really, really fast. We want to, we they want to, companies like Exxon, like Mobil, or like, you know, uh, solar energy companies, wind energy companies want to be able to know demand instantaneously. But also a lot of these sites are remote. They're in the middle of other parts of the country, other parts of the world, where it maybe is cost prohibitive to have people on site. So real-time monitoring of these facilities gives them that intelligent control and, con and smart devices throughout the organization itself. But there are diff difficulties with these analytics. Engineers especially face complex landscapes. Why? Because we can't use traditional tools that we have, okay, or that we get from manufacturing execution systems. And we can't just use generic big data systems like Hadoop or independent analytic applications. These tools look at the business side, not necessarily the engineer or technical side. So we need to try to find a bridge to improve you know, the corporate analytics, yes, and that's what some of those things do, but also we need things that help us on the, you know, the technical side, the engineering side. Companies often struggle to fit, you know, all of this data into the technical side. So they have data on finance, marketing, quality, but they have limited data in production or engineering. So, and also with that, when you start to integrate these different systems together, you need people who are quote unquote experts in IT and things like big data. So this introduces just another hurdle for engineers and students in like, whether it's our engineering management program or other technical programs, do get exposed to these kinds of topics and will be getting exposed more to these kinds of topics because it's something that engineers need. So in response, many organizations, and it works out especially for business sense, but not necessarily from a engineering perspective, many organizations create a central analytics team whose job is to, you know, create advanced algorithms and model to optimize production or business. While those are help uh, important, it, this approach that we use towards the business side doesn't necessarily en help engineers use analytics in our daily work. Engineers itself, you know, just like many other resources, are time poor, meaning we don't have a lot of time. We cannot, you know, they, we, we don't have new time or we don't have time to learn new tools, okay, necessarily, you know, right away. So this may, you know, by this happening, it causes engineers to revert back to the current systems and current tools of like spreadsheets and simple trend analysis that is either time consuming or is not, per, you know, productive use of their time or is cost prohibitive. So what we need to think about is how we educate engineers for and, and, and really end users towards the best options. So as technology has, uh, has evolved to create like things like connective plants, engineers also need to manage these factories on the technical side. Instead of relying on a central analytics team, engineers need to you know, seek out and be, have the ability to do their own. So we not only need to be analytic aware, uh, you know, where you need to look at trends, you know, real-time descriptive statistics. We need to have analytics enabled. We need to be analytics enabled, meaning that we need to be, you know, yeah, we're Excel and statistical tools, but we need to be analytic experts, okay? So we need to be the one that can actually also look at things like trend monitoring, inferential statistics, machine learning models, and then we don't necessarily have to be data scientists, but we need to know the right questions to ask. Data scientists focus on the critical issues, but engineers would benefit from understanding the analytics 
from all the way up to like that yellow analytics uh, expert bu uh, button or circle, it helps us really to get it further. So how do we, you know, how do we enable engineers? It doesn't mean changing them to data scientists. It gives, the, it, instead it talks about giving them access to the process data analytics. So process engineers, like, you know, like engineering managers, industrial engineers, won't become data scientists overnight for one, which they all have different, they have different backgrounds, but they can become analytics aware and enabled. Many engineers that I've worked with, you know, currently and previously are not even aware that so many of these analytics or these systems exist. So making them aware and enabled, let's get there first. Then by educating them on, on the analytics, hopefully they can solve more of their daily work independently and get more effective. Again, do they have to be an analytics wizard? No, but maybe they become an analytics expert in specific things for their domain to do process analysis to make improvements and improve their daily work. So this allows us to leverage not only the data experts, but the engineers for everyone to work more efficiently. So how do we actually do this? Well, we have to bring an engine, an organization into the modern approach, to using a modern approach. It includes, like, it re revolves around having self-service analytics, okay, where anyone can kind of go in, to, no matter what their needs are or their education is, that they can kind of go in and design their own self-service uh, analytic tool and run it. They, we have to teach engineers on how to do model selection, how to validate the different models, how to design these models, okay? And then the self-service approach will help us get that greater efficiency and hopefully create engineers who have better, better use of analytic information and make what well, in engineering and management what we call data-driven decision makers. We don't want engineers to be dependent on data scientists or analysts. We need engineers to have, be able to you know, tailor their own approach, design their own analytic tools, maybe with some support from data analysts, data scientists, but they need to be able to design their own approaches, selection, and validate their models so they can actually go and do it themselves.